door and asking you for beer bottles because you're alcoholic, he's got an issue. And this young man has been in this community about three or four times, the police have picked him up. And I know this for a fact because the police came here for him one time. And he came to my door the other day with a, uh, uh, the bottle of, uh, what was it again? Uh, Irish cream, he had a big bottle of liquor in his hand and he came to my door and asked for me. Um, so I, I, by the time I came to my door, he was gone. So I went on my bicycle riding around the community to look for him and there, Lord and behold, the police had him, uh, picked him up, found out that he robbed some houses and also, um, uh, I spoke to the officer and I described him and uh, she divulged to me what was going on and so on and so forth. So when I take these messages out and send it to the world, I'm reaching about 90 million people three times a week on television. If you'd like to watch my broadcast for those who are listening or those who are interested in the community, you can watch me on TV here, CBN TV channel 798. 5 o'clock every day, seven days a week. For those who are viewing in Jamaica, on Flow TV, I'm on uh, three times a week, uh, every Sunday at 2 p.m. and 11 p.m. and on Wednesday nights, 11 p.m. For those who are in the United States, I'm on the Now Network, uh, 12 o'clock every uh, Monday. And in the, United, in the UK and part of Africa, I'm on television on the... Uh, Faith Hope TV, or Hope? Faith World TV. I'm sorry, Stuart. <laughs> I'm talking about your station, buddy. I'm sorry, I just got a whole lot of stuff. Different networks I've worked with, but God bless you in the UK. I want to thank you for allowing me to be on your broadcast. I also want to thank each and every one that is allowing me to put my programs to go into the communities and do uh, crime and drug prevention workshops, motivational seminar, visit the prisons, speak to the kids in the school. I want to thank the School Board of Education throughout the world, uh, Canada. Uh, I'm well aware that we cannot speak of a religion in Canada in any school because there are so many diverse uh, types of religion and ethnicity. Uh, I've been able to have the honor and the pleasure of sharing my, my story of how I put the gun down, what I was going through. There's all of that on my station. I'm on uh, my YouTube station, which is, uh, uh, what's the name of it, visionoftruthtv.com. So for those of you who are out there watching it, this was for the purpose of letting my community, I've lived here for 14 years, and no one knows what I do. Uh, neighbors, uh, we're not really neighbors, we're just associates. Everybody kind of mind their own business. The world of change, because sometimes your, your, your neighbors can become your worst enemy, so they call them your frenemy. And those are people who pretend they're your friends, but they wait for the opportunity to see you lose your home. And uh, I thank God that we don't have such neighbors in our community. And if I do, I don't know them because we've been pretty courteous and caring towards one another. And uh, that's what a community should be. It's about love. It's not about hate. And it's not about showing how much you have over the other person. But helping the other person to grow their kids and make this a safer place and if it's safer here in Brampton it can be safer in Mississauga, um, Scarborough, anywhere, all over the place. I worked the Jane and Finch area for many years with um, different gangs and community. Uh, I worked the Jane and Wilner, well, thank God for Angela McCormack, um, uh, John Garden and Driftwood, we did a lot of work there. Angela, may your family smile because you risked your life so many times for these kids. And I remember West Humber Collegiate where they had Crips and Bloods and uh, they had Eminem and the NBC uh, crew. Those were younger gangs and had lots of issues, gun issues, uh, drugs issues. And you clean that community up. I don't think anybody in that community will ever forget you, Angela. Love you and may God be with you always and with your family. I know the work you've done. There's a lot of folks that have done a lot of work in cleaning up communities. While you guys go to work, somebody behind the scene, if not the police, somebody's behind the scene trying to make your community a better place. Uh, the scripture that I'm gonna share with you right now, I'm hearing people say, now they're doing another song, I feel it in my spirit. Uh, let's do one day at a time. Sometimes 
we we need to take one day at a time because uh, God is with you and you need to fear God because if you fear him you will love him if you love him you will serve him this song is entitled one day at a time <clears throat> praise God scripture that I want to share because without the word of God I'm nothing without the word of God and the understanding of the reason for the Bible as a book that can never lie as a book that can lead you from temptation as it has led me out of the life of crime and I'm so happy that because of it I'm somebody I can't give being bad credit I can only say I thank God that I had something to believe in. So here are the scriptures that I share for you that will help you if you choose. Romans chapter 12 verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Be not overcome by evil. I know evil. I know what it is to I have a gun pointed in my face and waking up out of my bed. I know what it is to have somebody looking for you and there's no hiding place. I know what it is not to sleep at nights. I know what it is that when there's a hard knock on my door, the fear that goes through me. And these are the things that 
God has allowed me so that I can talk to the bad guy because oftentimes the people that are able to make a true difference is the people who've been through it, who've been there. And I'm not happy that it happened to me, but it could have happened to you. The fact that it's happened to me, this is my testimony, this is my way of giving back to society all over the world. So please, these words I read to you again softly this time. Read a little softer. Read it again. First Peter, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Be diligent. Be, be wise in your environment. Be careful where you go, what you do. They said, show me your company and I'll tell you who you are. Well, if you hang out with all kinds of drug dealers every day, the police picks you up. Don't expect to think that, hey, I'm a good guy. How does he know? Look at your company. Look at the people you hang out with. You understand what I'm saying? And if you find yourself hanging out with criminals all day and then judges all night, then you need to search yourself to find out who you are or who really is your company. Because these things are very important and social media who is constantly fighting because some of the things that I speak of, the truth that I know, these are not things that I hear about or think about. These are some of the experiences that I've had. And the phone and all your devices is now twice as dangerous as the criminals that are out there. Because then you will know them when you see them. But social media that has actually taken over, and that means the rights that you sign over on your phone to say you have authorization to go into my phone. That's what you're actually doing. You have authorization to um, look at all the things I write, the private things that I hold dear, the little letter that I wrote to my grandma that only she should know how I feel, that others are seeing, that you're exposing. Please be careful. If you can go see grandma in person, please do that. If you can go see that friend that you want to talk to, see the friend so there's some sacred thing left because social media is like walking around naked in the community and that's what you're actually doing but because you can't see it it doesn't mean it's not there you know uh, let's look at it this way if you live in your car in your garage does that make you a car no it don't you have to be careful in where you go and what you who you associate with and what privacy that you hold dear to yourself and in your life I know what it is to be followed, I know what it is to be watched, I know what it is to have a phone tap, I know what it is to experience things that I cannot speak of without having repercussions. Because, see, the law is not perfect, but the law is there to be enforced, and you oftentimes think that the law is there to protect you. The law is there to protect the country. The society, and the society not necessarily means you. It may be chattel. It may be ownership of property that belongs to the queen. You'll never see your picture on the, on, on the dollar bill. It's people who they hold in high esteem that, that stands in that place. And those are the things that they're protecting. You are secondary because you yourself can become the enemy. I know many countries that have the army and the army itself is fighting its own people. Just look at history. There are many times. So to serve and protect may not necessarily mean to serve and protect you. You're here to serve your country, to do your best to make the country a better place. And that's your responsibility. The country then in return show their appreciation by allowing you to live peacefully if they so choose to live a good life, to give you a good education so you can serve them better, to give you all the needs that are necessary to make a peaceful society. But some people who've experienced both sides of the fence realize what's really going on. And that's the hard part of it. Let me sing another song for you.
I'm glad to be home again. This is a song that I wrote about 14 years ago when reflecting on my life to thank God and see how I could have been dead, but instead here I am writing songs and saying thank you God. And this is my appreciation for those who are in the army, for those who are all over the world as soldiers or loved ones who are coming back home for whatever reason to mom, to that sweet cooking, to that good memory of reminding you where you were and how you grew up as a child. I'm glad to be home again. I'm glad to be home the gun life, the Jamaican posse hang out with some bad boys and uh, God brought me back to the place where you see, home is where love is and wherever you get love, that's your home. That does not have to also be where you're born but oftentimes it's us going back into our past that we find that our presence are worth more than what people value you to be. You have to look at yourself like a thousand dollar bill. I know that's, I think Canada makes the thousand dollar bill, it's purple. I know what it's like and I've had some of them and when I go places to cash it, they don't want to do it because they don't even know if it's real or not. But because people don't know you as they don't know the thousand dollar bill, it don't make it no more or less valuable because your value is in you. And your value is in the creation of you because God saw purpose for you in this life. And that's why he made you. He allowed you to make it in life. And, and if you take that thousand dollar bill that not many people recognize the value of and you step on it, you crunch it, you, you, you wet it up, you soak it, you, 
you stomp it, you do all kinds of things, you put mud on it. And then you take it and wash it off like these $20 bills that's so hard to tear or rip in half these days. It's hard to rip the monies, because I've tried. And you take that $20, that, that $1,000 bill and you clean it off. How much is it worth now? You know, all that dirt, you see it all messy. A matter of fact, you can take it right back to the bank and don't clean it and just hand it over to them and they'll give you a brand new one. And if you want 10 100s, they'll give you. If you want 20 50s, they'll give it to you. You know, and that's who God is. He doesn't take value from you. He gives you value. Please, to give me learning to lean. Learning to lean. I want you to learn to lean on God because somebody made us. You know, and we don't have to get all crazy and say, did the chicken have the egg or the egg have the chicken? Or did, uh, did we evolve from apes and all that stuff? Let's get real. Learning to lean. My grandma's favorite song. Put some bass on it. A little bit of bass. Just a little bit. in Curacao. God bless you, Indra. Indra Bernadina, or Bernadini. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. She's one of the personal secretary that work for the prime minister, uh, the former prime minister uh, of Curacao. She's been in the office, that place, for 35 or 36 years. She's an awesome person. She saw the need of making a difference and she said figure to herself another gentleman by the name of Narwin Josefa Josefi or Giuseppe Norwin is gone now but 
Norin was somebody that used to bring in secular artists in the country of Curacao. And uh, he got hooked up and involved in drugs and he became an addiction. He took me, he said he heard my testimony playing one day. He played it on his radio station. And many souls were saved. People turned guns in, so he figured, okay, let's get together with um, Indra. And they brought me to Curacao. This was many years ago, and the tourist board was the one that sponsored my ticket. And the country and people of concern who wanted to um, make a true difference because they can't go out there and talk to the gunman and the drugs, people involved in drugs. So they figure if somebody can clean up our country, why don't we bring him? So they sponsored me to come in and I stayed there for two weeks. And in those two weeks, between Indra and um, Norwin, 26 guns were turned in. 2,000 bullets and over 800 um, young men that were on the other side of the law turned their lives around. When I saw that, the two chief of police for the country wrote up, they write in Papamento, it's a, it's a language of the island, they speak several different languages, but Papamento is their main language, uh, as, as well as English. And when they saw the difference that it made, they called me and they said, Jerry, you know what, we want to thank you for coming and making such a big impact in our country. As a matter of fact, they said to me that it would have taken a hundred police officers to do the work that was done in two weeks with the help of God. I don't take credit for it because I go where God tells me to go. I do what he asked me to do. There are times that I'm disobedient, yes, but I pay for that too. So what I'm trying to say to you is that if I had given up on my life <clears throat> and not believe that God can change my life, those 26 guns would not be off the street in Curacao. Those 200, those 800 people that gave their hearts to the Lord would never, probably never change, would have changed. And the 2,000 bullets, you see, it's bullets that kill people. Oftentimes we talk about getting guns off the street, but... I believe if they got all the bullets off the street, we'd have a better community. If they put fines on just owning a bullet, just as much as five to seven years for owning a gun, it would be a better place. But you know what? One hand can't clap. So whatever ideas you have concerning how to keep violence out of our community and keep guns out of our children's hands, Please to call my number at 647-692-7793 and I will share your idea even if it sounds stupid because no idea towards helping to keep illegal guns out of our children's hands is any bad idea <clears throat> because you're a parent too and you have a voice and I'm willing to share your ideas and be your voice to reach millions of people that you cannot reach. See, one hand can't clap, and you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. If you sit aside and just talk and run up your mouth, then you're part of the problem. Because help can't wait, and it's better to try and fail than fail to try, and that's all I did. And as a result of me trying, God has brought me in front of prime ministers and presidents, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm boasting, but someone as simple as myself coming from the street life to see that God has actually turned my life around in such an awesome way so that even in the White House, I've been invited twice. Washington, D.C., when President Obama was in power and able to sing on the White House lawn. That to me just blow my mind. It's just totally awesome because in going to the White House, there is a clearance that's involved. And for you to actually be uh, cleaned up as an ex-person who was messed up, exed up, and sexed up, as I say all the time, and to actually have a clean police record and show that there's been no criminal activity. Over 28 years it took me to do that, but it only took a couple of years to mess up. 
So sometimes what you do in five minutes can take your whole lifetime to clean up. But don't give up. You can clean up your life. You can become better. I'm a living an example of that. And some people in high places may or may not like it, but it's not about them. It's about you. It's about the changes that you can make by lighting candles instead of cursing darkness. Instead of seeing the fault in person, see the possibilities. Your glass is not half empty, it's half filled. At least you've got something in your glass. You have something to offer. And every last one of us have something to contribute in the community. So as I go to different countries, God has allowed me to visit the Majesty's prison and film it in St. Kitts Navis, the Prime Minister there, Dr. Denzel Dennis, an awesome man that loves this community. He's the Prime Minister of St. Kitts Navis, about 35,000 people. It's a small island, but it's a beautiful island. The waters are clear, there's a lot of loving, caring people. And uh, Dr. Denzel Dennis, he loves the people of his country. Why I say that? Most Prime Ministers who've visited any occasion usually stay five to ten minutes just give his speech and his condolences and whatever it is that they do 15 minutes tops and then they move on because they have so many engagements that are pressing i know my mayor here right here in the city of brampton patrick brown he's got so many bookings that i think he, he needs a bigger book because he's just he, he doesn't have enough hands and feet and, and thank God that he won the election because Patrick Brown is doing an awesome job here in the city of Brampton. I worked with him and, and, and he's an awesome guy. He cares about people, he listens to people. And if you have any request that is viable and logical and, 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 and fair, if you can't bring it to him, you bring it to me. You bring it to me because we have someone that will hear our voice now in the city of Brampton. So wherever you are, Patrick Brown, keep up the good work, man, and all your constituents and people. And I know I'm supposed to come and work with the, the police department, Crime Stoppers, but, you know, I'm praying because I don't want them to use me to do the wrong thing, so I end up being shot or killed. So I'm doing my bit from this side and one-on-one -on -one mentorship with young people, going to court with them when their families and mothers and fathers have given up on them. And you would not believe there's a lot of those here, right here in the city of Brampton. Their parents don't want to sign up for their, put a mortgage on their house for their bail anymore because they're losing it. Because the kids are not acting responsibly. People are losing their ten and $15,000 because the kid don't turn up for court. So they lose the money. So there's a lot that's going on that I'm dealing with behind the scene. God bless you and may you keep up the good work. But what I'm saying is Prime Minister, Prime Minister, the one of St. Kitts Nevis, um, Dr. Denzel Dennis, he brought all the students out of all the schools and put them in a stadium. And he, uh, they basically his, uh, his vice president, the vice president was the one that introduced me. And I went up there and spoke to, I believe over, I think 15,000 or 10, about, I would say about 8,000 children. 8,000 kids, and he stayed two hours. A prime minister, figure this, staying out there, sitting in the sun, two hours to hear someone speak to his children that of his island. How awesome is that? That man loves his country. And he speaks to you like sitting, you know, like how you speak to your buddies. He, he's just a down-to-earth guy. I love him. I just believe that we should have more prime ministers, more presidents like that. I met five other prime ministers, and I'll share those with you. Uh, Prime Minister Gerald of St. Eustatius, a beautiful Black Sand Island. I'll be sharing those with you coming up. And then uh, Mr. F Mr. Gums of St. Martin, president. He's President Gums. You know, I'll share those with you in the future. But I'm going to read one more scripture before praying and closing. And I thank every last one of you on Facebook and uh, YouTube and Twitter and Spotify, all the different social media. If you have any idea also to how to help me to get out there, apart from you sharing my program, uh, please to tune in every week, 12 o'clock prayer at uh, visionoftruthtv.com. And there, please also call in for your requests. But here's the scripture, because it's all about God. But you know what? Man searching for God is also awesome. And the truth is... That's what Vision of Truth is about. You may not always like it, but it's going to be the truth. Read that scripture. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Thanks be to God. God says in everything, give thanks. Give thanks when life is hard. Give thanks when there's things are going great for you. So that means that it's not about um, how you feel or your situation or the status that you have, but it's about God and who He is in your life. So give Him thanks in all things. It says in all things to acknowledge Him. If you love God, you're going to get Him involved in everything. And some of you might say, how can I give God thanks when I got a flat tire, that jerk, he just pushed me off the road. How can I give thanks? At least you're alive. You could have died, right? You could have been a cripple. Many people this happens to every day. So every day you get up, you say, you know what? God, that guy Jerry, that crazy guy next door that I've listened to, I, I guess he's right. I thank you, Lord, for this day. I'm going to go up positive today. And I'm not going to let anybody get me up tight. Let us pray. I want you to pray a soft song. Uh, Heaven's Grocery Store. Heaven's Grocery Store. I want you to pray that, play that while I pray. For those of you who've never been shopping, you need this. Turn it down. Here it's coming. Turn it up a little bit more. Praise God. That's it right there. Praise God. I got a story to tell you all before I pray. And it's entitled Heaven's Grocery Store. And it goes like this. As I was walking along life's highway a long, long time ago, one day I came upon the sign that 